Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and the deck's objective is to equip Colossus Hammer to our various warriors. Colossus Hammer, a 1 mana artifact equipment, giving the equipped creature plus 10 plus 10 and it loses flying, but the equip cost is a whopping 8 mana, which is quite expensive. But now with Zanikar Rising, we've got a few ways of equipping Colossus Hammer for free, and the first way to do that is with a Resolute Strike, a 1 mana instant, giving target creature plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, and if it's a warrior, we can attach an equipment we control to it for free, so that can lead to some very explosive starts, where on turn 2 we could already be attacking with a 13-13 Fireblade Charger, so with an ideal draw we can potentially kill on turn 3. And then we've got some other creatures that synergize quite well with equipment, like Core Blade Master, a 2 mana 1 1 double striking warrior, giving equipped warriors we control double strike. We've got Champion of the Flame, a 2 mana 1 1 with Trample, and it gets plus 2 plus 2 for each aura and equipment attached to it. And then we've got some other various equipment, like Relic Axe and Shadow Spear, that we can put on those creatures. And then the other way we have of equipping Colossus Hammer for free is with Nahiri, Heir of the Ancients, a 4 mana 4 loyalty planeswalker, and the plus 1 ability makes a 1 1 white core warrior creature token, and we can attach an equipment we control to it for free. So that's another way of making an 11 11 core warrior token. And then the minus 2 gives us additional utility, letting us take a look at the top 6 cards of our library, and we can reveal a warrior or equipment card from among them and put it into our hand. And the minus 3 deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to twice the number of equipment we control. And then to add a bit of consistency, we also have the full playset of Avalakut Awakening, which lets us put any number of cards from our hand on the bottom of our library, and then draw that many cards plus one. So that gives us an additional way of digging for Colossus Hammer besides Nahiri. So we essentially have eight ways of equipping the hammer for free, and then four hammers plus some additional ways of potentially drawing towards it. So this was my first version of the Red White Warrior deck, which, you know, did have some explosive starts and definitely had some cool moments. But then I ended up building a second version of the deck, which makes the deck a little bit more consistent in my opinion, as we now get to play with Karn the Grey Creator, a 4 mana planeswalker that starts out at 5 loyalty and has a passive ability that shuts down activated abilities of artifacts at the opponent's control. But the minus 2 is what we're really interested in, as we get to reveal an artifact card we own from outside the game and put it into our hand. In other words, we get to grab an artifact out of our sideboard, which means we can now play one copy of Colossus Hammer in the sideboard, alongside three copies in the main deck, and then four copies of Karn to grab the one Colossus Hammer, essentially giving us access to seven copies of Colossus Hammer in the deck, making the deck a lot more consistent at finding the hammer. And then of course we've got the utility of having 15 cards in the sideboard to search up, so if we already have Colossus Hammer we can potentially search any one of these various artifacts, which I'll go over in just a second. So to help us get Karn in play a little bit sooner, we're also playing some Artifact Ramp. So we've got the full playset of Guardian Idol and Mindstone, which can help us enable turn 3 Nahiri or Karn, which speeds up the deck to potentially set up those turn 4 kills, which is more or less where you want to be in Historic. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana, we still have our 3 copies of Colossus Hammer and 4 copies of a Resolute Strike, and then 4 copies of Fireblade Charger as one of our warriors of choice as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one Goblin Warrior, and as long as the Charger is equipped, it also has haste, meaning we can potentially play the Charger, equip it, and attack with it in the very same turn. And getting a single attack in with the Charger is sometimes enough to secure a win, because when the Charger dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So if we have a Charger equipped with Colossus Hammer, it's going to be an 11 11, so if the opponent tries to kill it, that's 11 damage to the opponent's face, which is often enough to win the game. Then at 2 mana we've got some of the usual suspects, with the full playset of Core Blade Master, 2 mana 1-1 one, one Double Strike, giving equipped warriors we control Double Strike as well. So even if we don't equip the Blade Master itself with Colossus Hammer, but for instance we maybe have Nahiri that equips one of the warrior tokens, we still get a Double Striking token, which is quite nice. And then Champion of the Flame with a built-in trample makes it much more difficult for the opponent to chump block our giant creature. And then we've got our Artifact Ramp with Guardian Idol and Mindstone, still playing the full playset of Valakut Awakening to help us dig to 
towards the various combo pieces and then we've got our four copies of Nahiri which did get a little bit weaker since we've got fewer targets with the minus two ability since we've got fewer equipments and warriors in the deck but still quite powerful with the plus one ability letting us equip hammer for free and then a minus three can also potentially clear a blocker especially if we get multiple equipment out of the sideboard with Karn and speaking of Karn we also have 15 cards to search up out of our sideboard giving the deck a ton of additional utility single copy of Mox Amber probably not going to search it up very often as it only makes mana if we also have Nahiri in play but sometimes the one extra mana can make a difference we've got some graveyard hate with Tormod script and Gravedigger's Cage of course our one copy of Colossus Hammer which is the most important card in the sideboard we've got Shadow Spear if we need a lifelink and trample out of our equipment Glass Casket as cheap creature interaction Maze Mind Tome for the grinding matchups if we don't have any specific combo piece we need to find and just want to gain a bit of card advantage we've got Mirror Shield for Hexproof to protect our creatures Relic Axe is just a cheap equipment to boost up our warriors and then Stonework Pack Beast it gives us an artifact creature that also counts as a warrior because sometimes we'll already have a Resolute Strike and Colossus Hammer but we simply don't have a warrior to target with our Resolute Strike and Pack Beast is the perfect solution and then we've got Wings of Hubris to give our creature flying. Now you might be thinking, doesn't Colossus Hammer remove flying from the creature? And it does, but it also matters in which order you equip the creature. If you first put Colossus Hammer on a creature and then equip it with Wings of Hubris, it will still have flying. If you first equip the wings and then equip Colossus Hammer, it will lose flying. So the ordering is very important. And Wings of Hubris is a cheap way to give our creature flying. And it also has great synergy with our Fireblade Charger, because Wings has the additional ability of making our creature unblockable until end of turn and then we have to sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step so that means if we equip our fireblade charger we can potentially get 11 damage in unblocked and then end of turn we have to sacrifice our fireblade charger meaning 11 more damage to the opponent's face so a single attack is enough to win the game then mall of the skyclaves gives plus two plus two flying and first strike transmogrifying one gives us more removal amber cleave gives plus one plus one double strike and trample and then Platinum Angel can sometimes win the game against decks that can't remove it. So plenty of variety in the sideboard and can easily be customized to fit your needs. And then going over the mana base, besides our four copies of Valakut Awakening, which we can play as a tap land, we also have a couple dual lands with Sacred Foundry, Pathway, and four copies of Clifftop Retreat, and then five mountains and four plains. So most of our lands should come into play untapped. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Just need to draw any third land and then we get to play turn 2 idle, turn 3 Nahiri, and then equip the hammer right away. And Blade Master for double strike, so pretty solid hand all around. Alright, we can also go a different path now with Resolute Strike. Could just win on turn 3. Who knows? Opponent might be on goblins. Nope. Dinosaurs. And Marauding Raptor. So they are incentivized to block here. But uh, let's see if they go for it anyway. Well. And that's game. The hammer just chilling on the side for a second. Doesn't know what's going on. But uh, yeah, Core Blade Master, double strike, gets in for 26 damage on turn 3. Not bad, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Yurion Sky Nomad. And what do we think of the hand? Missing Nahiri and Resolute Strike, only have Karn. Bit light on lands. It's a mulligan for me. Alright, this is better. And then I don't really need Fireblade Charger since we have Nahiri to equip Hammer instead. Of course, if we draw Resolute Strike in the first couple turns, I might regret it. And then I want to keep a second Nahiri in case uh, they have a counter spell or removal spell for the first one. Uh, we'll just play Hammer. Tapped Sacred Foundry. Sadly, no two mana ramp artifact for turn three Planeswalker, but. Opponents also off to a slow start. I see Demonic Pact. They can deal for damage somewhere, make me discard or draw two. 
but four damage is not enough to take out any creature here. Alright, so I could minus to try and find a double strike creature, but my opponent probably has some removal here. And I would rather just play Karn. Yeah, we'll just start by attacking. Flicker of Fates. A reasonable answer here. So now here we can plus. Flicker also combos with Demonic Pact. I could plus Karn, I could minus Karn. If I minus, they can take it out with Demonic Pact. I think I'll probably just plus and not plus on anything. Another flicker for the token. But now they've used two flickers on my token instead of on the Demonic Pact, so they'll have to find another answer for it. Conquer's death. Gonna take care of Nahiri, but we've got a backup. And Thoughtsea's gonna take my backup. Alright, that's unfortunate. Now my hand's not too exciting anymore. So next turn... My opponent's not gonna have enough mana to put Yorion in hand and play it, so they will need another answer for Pact in hand, otherwise they're gonna lose. What's my best bet with Karn here? Is there anything I can get that can mess up my opponent's Demonic Pact somehow? Guess we'll find out. I am not frightened by you. So I'm currently missing a way to equip Colossus Hammer. I could decide to just get a random equipment to equip my Charger with. Don't think I have any hate cards that are particularly useful here. Could just get a Maze Mind Tome. Karn is going to die to the 4 damage. And I guess so is a Charger. So I think I'm better off just getting a Tome. In case my opponent can drag out the game here. So Karn down. Doom foretold. It's going to be too late to sacrifice the Monic Pact, so they need another answer. Puts Yorin in hand. So I get to scry. And then I'll sacrifice probably just Guardian Idol. Can maybe make some mana first to draw a card. Play some random creatures. But yeah, the Demonic Pact trigger goes on the stack. So even if they sacrifice it to Doom Foretold, it's too late. And my opponent loses the game, so... Yeah, they had all the answers they needed to prevent getting hit by Colossus Hammer, but they ran out of answers for their own Demonic Pact. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing either Nahiri or a way to equip Colossus Hammer. We've got kind of redundant Karn and Hammer, but I do have Awakening to get rid of some cards potentially, so I think it's still worth keeping. And then I'll just play Hammer turn one. Turn two, usually prefer Blade Master over Champion. And then turn three, we can Awakening, getting rid of Karn. And the second creature. And if we draw the one mana instant, we could just win the game on the spot. Although Mars Grasp is going to prevent that from happening. Alright, now that we drew Nahiri, we can play a different kind of game. So we'll just play Awakening Tapped. Going to hold on to the champion, as I don't expect it to be necessary. And then we can play Nahiri to equip Hammer.
and glory. My home. So let's see if my opponent can answer my 1111 token now. Hateful Eidolon. So they're playing some sort of enchantment deck here. Kaya's Ghost Form can help them chum block. Fair enough. So I can also use Nahiri's Minus ability to kill Eidolon. Is there anything I can get with Karn that just wins me the game on the spot is a question. For one mana I can give Flying or Double Strike. Mox Amber gives me access to one more mana. But that's still not relevant. So... Yeah, Shadow Spear can give Trample, but... It's going to be to a different creature. Glass Casket could also be okay, but it, I guess, doesn't get around Ghost Form, which also takes Exile into account anyway. So I might just be better off getting, like, an Amber Cleave for next turn. And then this turn we'll just play a Charger. Kill Eidlum. And next turn we can uh, smash an Ember Cleave. Charger doesn't have any power here because of the Mars Grasp, so it doesn't deal any damage when it dies. But yeah, can my opponent survive an Ember Cleaved token here? Not sure what to get with Karn at this point. Don't think it matters too much. I'll get a Shadow Spear, why not? Attack, Amber Cleave. And if they do have removal, I can still plus Nahiri to re equip my token. Which is why I didn't minus on Eidolon. Opponent does have Heartless Acts. It's too bad. Nahiri down. So I guess if they have another Heartless Act, they could survive. Although Resolute Strike is a nice one too, as it's gonna give us a second way of equipping. Can plus on the Amber Cleave. Play Blade Master. And attack for 27. Eh, looks like they're dead. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we have both Nahiri and Karn. The problem is that the hand's a bit slow, missing one of those two mana ramp artifacts. But uh, on the play, we can maybe still afford to keep. And then I'll have to play Awakening Tapped. Especially if we draw one of our artifacts here, I want to be able to play turn 2 into a turn 3 Planeswalker. Turn one, Graf Digger's Gage. Okay. And a Mind Stone, so opponent's not gonna like Karn very much, as that'll shut down the opposing Mind Stone as well. So the plan is Karn, minus, get Hammer, and then following turn I can Nahiri plus equip Hammer. Alright, opponent's got their own Karn. Fair enough. 
interested to see what they get. God Pharaoh statue. That's pretty rude. They wanna tax my mana. Well, I'm gonna tax theirs. So let's see if they have an answer for my Karn. Blast Zone. Oof, Blast Zone is actually quite good against my Colossus Hammer. So that's a bit of an issue. I briefly had Sorcerer Spyglass in my sideboard, which would have been quite useful right about now to shut down Blast Zone. But we've got other equipment we can get. Karn gets Spyglass, which is going to see double Nahiri, which they can now shut down. Yeah, that's too bad. Do I have any way of removing the Spyglass with Karn? Can't think of any, but we can probably get some useful stuff still. So how about we minus two... You will not and then... Could always just go for Ember Cleave, or I can get a Relic Axe, which I get to play equip on my Charger, play Blade Master to give a double strike. That can hit pretty hard. Or maybe better, Maul of the Skyclaves for a bit of evasion. Could get Maze Mind Tome to start drawing. Kind of like the idea of getting a Relic Axe, which is a little bit cheaper to move around. And then no need to play out Colossus Hammer just yet. And we can hit for six. And we'll pass a turn. So both decks trying to shut each other down here. Cascading Cataracts. So, next turn they could play Godfire Statue. But we've got a lot of mana. And if at any point my opponent taps out and we draw Resolute Strike, we could maybe combo kill the opponent with a Blade Master. Opponent passes to keep a Blast Zone, presumably. So... We'll attack. Opponent takes it. And then we can plus on nothing. Play champion. And I think I'll move the Relic Axe, because they might decide to sacrifice Blast Zone. I guess they can decide to put Blast Zone on two and then destroy all two drops, but that's also going to set them back on mana. Although that would leave me with only Fireblade Charger. So I guess that's a fair strategy. Second Blast Zone on one. Alright. So they can't play Gifts. They have to start sacking stuff. Blast Zone on two gets sacrificed. Opponent also loses Spyglass now. So I can play Nahiri and equip Hammer. Although they do have the Blast Zone on one, which can blow up Hammer, but now we drew Resolute Strike, so it doesn't matter. And I can just win on the spot. Well, that was a pretty tricky game with lots of back and forth with the two Karns, getting all sorts of sideboard cards. But this should just end the game. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and yeah, we've got Resolute Strike, Karn can get Hammer, and if we don't draw a Warrior, Karn can also provide a Warrior, potentially. We are on the draw, so it's possible Karn dies before we can minus a second time, but we do have a bit of ramp, 
So at the very least we get to play a turn 3 Karn. So fine hand, gets better if we draw warrior, and gets better if my opponent can disrupt any of my pieces here. Alright, Soul Warden, so life gain deck. Could be pretty aggressive if they have a turn to a Janice Pride Mate. So that could be bad. It's gonna be a Duxos instead. And then I usually prefer playing Guardian Idol turn 2 if I don't need the 1 mana, as opposed to Mind Stone that can tap for mana in the same turn. I'll say the... So currently I can't really play Karn and then minus a second time. But now that we drew Nahiri, we can change game plan since Karn can just get a hammer, so don't need to worry about getting a creature, and then next turn Nahiri can... Uh, Equip the hammer onto the token, so that should work out just fine. And then we'll have to wait and see if making an 11-11 token is enough. And yeah, now that they've got an Ajani Sprite mate, I'm not so sure. So, stick to the plan here, play Hammer, play Nahiri. So, they can decide to sacrifice Alsaid to make one of their creatures protection from white to get past my token. Oof, Banishing Lights. Just gonna get rid of my hammer altogether. So now... Yeah, I can't even re-equip if I find another warrior with my Resolute Strike. So I can keep my token alive in case I draw another hammer or another Karn. Or I can trade for Soul Warden here, although they can decide to sack Alsaid to protect Soul Warden. Yeah, I think I gotta keep my token alive, otherwise a single top deck doesn't get me back in the game. Now at least Karn and Hammer are both alive draws. Alright, so gotta go digging with Mindstone. No hammer. Yeah, my options are running pretty thin. Can play another idle, play Taplan Pass. Can try to just use Resolute Strike as a combo trick. But that seems pretty weak. Don't think it's worth it to pay two life here just to draw another card end of turn, so I'll just wait and play Taplan. Could have also decided to keep up the 2 mana for Guardian Idol to maybe block one of the 1-1 one -one creatures. But we'll go with this approach. And then could attack for one if I'm not gonna block. But I'll just stay back in case we need to chum block. Second Soul Warden. And a second Pride Mate. Yep, this looks pretty bad. Sadly, we don't have any sweepers in the deck. So now I'm forced to chum block Pride Mates, otherwise I'm dead. Because they can also sag the Alsate, which gains one life with Duxos, which would put an extra counter on Pride Mate if I just block the Soul Warden. And Champion of the Flames not gonna cut it. So, play Mindstone Sacrifice, but at this point I don't think we have any outs.
Uh, Fallout could awakening. Let's have a look at what our next draw steps would give. Just out of curiosity. So yeah, banishing light, good interaction. Most decks don't have answers for my Colossus Hammer, but banishing light does the trick. All right, we would have actually found another hammer, so we were kind of close to getting something going, but yeah, not enough here. All right, GG's. And a Pride Mate with protection from white gets across the finish line. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's got a Resolute Strike, it's missing Colossus Hammer or Karn. Although I do have Awakening to maybe redraw a few extra cards. So I think it's still acceptable. And then. Turn two, probably play idle. Turn three, I'll have to decide if I want to Awakening right away or maybe get Blade Master in play first. I guess we'll play the planes for now. Well, let's see what we're up against. Black red. Could also go Mindstone into Blade Master. Opponent's got their own Mind Stone. Alright, so we've got some options. I also don't hate Mind Stone into Awakening. Although getting the creature in play first is better if we eventually draw Hammer. Problem is we might draw into more Warriors. And then Blade Master would be a bit redundant. So I think I'm just leaning Mind Stone and then Awakening. Getting rid of Strike and Blade Master. And hopefully we'll find Nahiri or Karn. Crashing Drawbridge, alright. This is starting to look like a Minotaur combo deck. Double Drawbridge. So if my opponent goes Ironcrack feet into Deathbell of Warcry, I could just be dead next turn. Well, we drew all the cards we wanted. So this turn, I can Karn, get Hammer, play Hammer. So yeah, we'll just get Karn in play. Which also shuts down the opponent's Mind Stone. And Drawbridge, so it shuts down all their artifacts. And we get to have a nice mana efficient turn. And then next turn, Nahiri can start plussing. Now they can, of course, still block with a drawbridge, so that buys them more time. Uh-oh. I hope my opponent realizes that Mindstone is shut down. Alright, they do. Just plays a Morog, so it definitely looks like a Deathbell of Warcry deck. But uh, now adopting Morog as one of the Minotaurs as well. Because, yeah, they wouldn't have been able to cast the Deathbell of Warcry if that was their plan. Alright, so can play Nahiri. And then we'll just plus. What can Karn do? I don't know if I want to get anything specific at this point. I don't think there's anything that really interacts with Morog. I guess I could get my Transmogrifying Wands and turn Morog into an Ox. Is that what I want to do? Doesn't seem necessary. Sadly, don't have double white, so I don't get to keep up a resolute strike. Do I just get, like, an ember cleave here? Maybe. So we've got an 11 11 on defense. Nahab joins the fun. Opponent passes. 
So, yeah, I think we can play this untapped. Attack with my token, Amber Cleave, and potentially Resolute Strike as well. Depending on the situation. And then we can still use Nahiri to make an extra token and move the equipment around. So right now, this would give plus one, plus another two. So 14 trample, so that should be lethal. I guess even without the uh, resolute strike, it would have been enough. All right, so my opponent had pretty explosive start with Iron Crank Feet. Luckily, Karn prevented Death Bell Warcry from happening. And uh, yeah, Morog wasn't enough to get past my 11-11 token. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a uh, fine opening hand. We've got Hammer and Nahiri. Don't have the two mana ramp, so it's gonna be a little bit on the slow side. But we could always randomly draw a Resolute Strike and then we'll have a turn 3 champion attacking. Well, speak of the devil. Opponent does seem to be holding a shock, so that could have been a reason to wait until turn 3 so I can play champion and then a Resolute Strike right away. But uh, we'll still have Nahiri to equip our creature with. And it's possible they were just playing a goblin deck, and in that case they typically don't have one mana interaction. But I guess the gruel sleeve was a bit of a giveaway. It's gonna be turn three shifting ceratops. Sadly, no fourth land, but blade master will do just fine. And in fact, I should probably just do this now. I don't get to like ambush my opponents. But I play around a shock, which is probably more important, and Red Green's gonna struggle to get past an 11 11 double strike. And my point explodes. So, yeah, we've got a pretty good win rate against Dinosaur decks today, getting the early combo with the Resolute Strike onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, fine opening hands. We've got two mana ramp, both planeswalkers. So, it's gonna be a bit on the slow side since we need to Karn for a hammer first. But if we draw third land, we should be in good shape. And then I can afford to play Fireblade Charger here. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one forests. All right, still need a land here. Hopefully we'll find one. Otherwise, I just get to play some more creatures out. Turn two Paradise Druid. All right, I'll take a Mind Stone. And then I'm happy to trade, even with my champion. Opponent accepts, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Cultivate, opponent's gonna keep on ramping. So now the plan is probably Karn get Hammer. And then hopefully draw land for next turn so I can Nahiri and equip the Hammer. But I guess I can also Karn Minus to get Mox Amber so we'll be able to uh, do everything we want. But getting the Hammer is definitely the priority in case they can answer Karn. And then I guess I'll stay back here. In case my opponent plays Nissa, I can Chomblock. And there's Nissa. Yeah, it seems worthwhile to get an extra Karn activation. The only reason not to block is if I were to draw a Resolute Strike. Yeah, let's jump. Now my opponent could just hard cast Ulamog or all sorts of scary Eldrazi next turn, but not much I can do about it, sadly. 
and I guess we drew the land anyway, so we don't need Mox Amber. So is there anything else I want to get with Karn? My allies are counting on me. Something that can shut down Nissan, don't really have that. I guess I could just get some regular equipment and then put it on the Fireblade Charger, which gains haste. But I'm not going to have enough to actually kill Nissa. So I'm probably better off just getting a Mox Amber anyway, or getting like an Amber Cleave for the double strike. And then hope that they can't play a giant Ulamog here. Ugin Spirit Dragon would also be bad. I welcome new allies. Right. Opponent's making a lot of mana, and there's Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Yeah, so it goes. I won't be gone forever. Still have our token, but hammer's gone. And uh don't think we're beating an Ulamog here. Farewell, and thank you for the lesson. Yeah, the ramp decks are pretty scary if they get to untap with Nissa. And that's maybe why my opponent traded for Paradise Druid, is they wanted to protect their planeswalker at all costs. So yeah, I think I'm out of options here. Um, I guess I can take an Ulamog hit, and then I gotta hope to somehow draw another hammer, and then cheese my opponent out with Embercleave. So I gotta draw with Mindstone, because, yeah, I don't have a hammer, and I don't have a Resolute Strike. So, my options are... Starting to diminish by the second. Yeah, I think we're out of options now. I'm gonna be dead in two attacks. And a single draw step doesn't get me out of it. Frank Tusk, opponents piling on the threats. Alright, I think it's gonna be GG. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Don't have a hammer just yet, but we have Nahiri to dig towards it, as well as Awakening. And now we've got Karn, which can search one up. Turn to Idol. And then... We'll get Karn in play first. Opponent with a Mazes and the Gates deck. So they're gonna be ramping and trying to assemble 10 gates. And they've got Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, so a spicy 5 color deck. Alrighty, well, we just get to slam down Nahiri. Could also get a Mox Amber here, and that allows me to play an extra creature perhaps. I guess that's fine. Got the Blade Master for double strike anyway. You will not threaten this world. The solution lies in stone. I can work with that. Help me remove All right. Well, we've got a nice start. Let's see what our opponent can do about it. If their plan is just to ramp this turn, they're gonna die to the Blade Master giving double strike. So they need to find some interaction. 
Honden of Infinite Rage. I'm afraid that's not going to cut it unless they've got a bounce spell for two mana here. So yeah, we'll just play Blade Master attack. They don't seem to have any interaction. And that's game. So with a good hand, we can usually win around turn 5 if we don't face too much interaction, and the deck is capable of winning much faster as we've seen with Resolute Strike, leading to some very explosive wins, which is usually what I'm looking for in a historic deck. And I have been liking the addition of Karn the Great Creator quite a bit, giving us that flexibility and improving the consistency. Overall, I could also see making some changes, maybe cutting some of the warriors, adding a little bit more interaction to the deck so we just don't die to other explosive decks and then we get to interact a little bit more. Maybe that reduces the number of kills we get with Resolute Strike early on, so it's definitely a bit of a balancing act. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.